Hey guys, Simon here. Just wanted to talk to you about uh, something uh, which is fairly popular at the minute, which is the new theory E exams. So I've got some uh, information about those, some helpful tips, advice. I've also got some free support available for you. Okay, so let's get into it. Lots of students are saying to us at the moment the new E exams are harder than the outgoing uh, paper exams. Now, that is something we can debate till the cows come home, but ultimately the subject matter has not changed. Okay, so the CAA have not changed how the weather works, they've not changed how an aeroplane works, um, the subject matter has not changed, nor have the learning objectives. So the learning objectives haven't changed and the material hasn't changed. Uh, however, the exams have been completely rewritten. So there are questions in there which are, if you've experienced the paper exams, they're going to be worded slightly different to the, to the way they were before. Um, there is also a, a much larger volume of questions than in the previous exams. So the previous exams, there were three papers per subject um, and they've been around since 2014 I believe so you know that if, if you look at the question bank questions that were available uh, to us up until now some of those however they've done it have been fairly you know closely worded to exam questions that have appeared um, so historically People have revised less for the exams, used the, the apps and, and still pass these exams relatively easily. That's not the case anymore. Okay, now I'm going to argue that some of the people that have revised for exams over using these apps and not reading the books, and I know this to be the case because I've spoken to people that have skimmed read the books and, and revised from apps alone, they were passing the exams. Now did they have a sound knowledge? Maybe. Um, it's debatable. So now more than ever you need to understand the subject matter for these subjects okay and more importantly to that if you're planning to be a competent pilot which I hope you are you need to understand this theory material. Weather will kill you okay. Poor flight planning could kill you. You know it's serious if you're going to learn to fly learn the theory subject properly okay there's no half-hearted way of doing this you know previous times there is a chance you could have passed the exam with perhaps a, a bare minimum of knowledge but does that make you a safe pilot I don't think so unfortunately the, the only people who are going to sin the questions in the exams are the students okay the examiners are there to invigilate the exams and um, you know just to, to oversee it uh, the, the exams also now, you know, in previous times, if you had a nice examiner, they might sit down with you afterwards and say, okay, you failed this question, this question, this question, um, let's look at why you failed it, let's try and get to the bottom of your understanding of that question. The new exam system, um, from what I can gather, only gives you an indication as to what area you should revise in. Students are telling me it doesn't tell you which questions you failed on. So again, even more of an importance to know the subject matter. Now, we do get feedback from students and one student came to us in particular and said that one of the questions he had been asked, the subject material was not in the Pauli's book or the AFE book. Now the question referred to vortex turbulence. Now, he knows this to be wake turbulence, okay, which is a more commonly used description for it however it's the same thing if you're well revised on it it pretty much boils down to the same thing so this is why you need an in-depth knowledge of the subjects it's never been a more important time to know these subjects and unfortunately I do believe that the majority of students are failing these, these exams not through any errors in the books or um, it's just literally through not revising enough we've got students who say you know we ask them Have you, did you read the book Oh yeah, no, I, I, I quickly read it, yeah, and then I just went on the question bank. It's not good enough anymore. Read it two or three times. Okay, so I've got some tips for you. These are really going to help you revise. Read all the books section by section. It really, really is important to do it that way. There's no point um, binge reading the whole book. It's not likely to sink in that way. 
I would do small small bits at a time uh, so that you make sure that um, you have a sound understanding before you move on. Uh, they're, they're quite, you know, they're not massive books, but there's quite a lot of information in there and you really don't want to be kind of reading the whole book and then forgetting half of it. Just do, you know, little bits at a time. Uh, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour a day. Uh, just get through a chapter at a time. Each book, each subject chapter at a time as well. Uh, you're going to come across subjects that have a little bit of crossover as well. So, for example, air law and operational procedures have some crossover in subject matter. So, you, when you come to do uh, operational procedures after air law, perhaps you might find that there's some commonalities there. So, it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Tip number two, at the end of each chapter, make sure you've understood the subject matter. If you get a question wrong, write it down, read upon it again, read upon that section again, work out why you didn't understand it. There's never ever a stupid question. You know, there's never a question that we haven't heard and things. So always ask for help, you know, don't be embarrassed. Some people really struggle with theory. You know, they, I've met some really, um, motivated people who are you know even you know people who are really intelligent they've you know done university degrees and things and they just don't get it so um you know everybody's different so don't be ashamed to ask for help um your flying school will support you you know and if you're a student here all you've got to do is ask our flight instructors at the minute if you need to talk to anybody we can get somebody online with you on zoom with you one to one or you can come on the uh, intensive ground schools Once you've read the books twice, minimum of twice, then start using the apps to revise. I'd recommend not sitting the exam until you've got around about 90%. Just bear in mind that not all of these apps are up to date at the minute. Look at what questions you've got wrong and study in detail the explanations that the, the question bank's given you and then perhaps refer back to your books again and make sure that you fully understand it before sitting the exam. Okay, if you're not understanding something, one of, one of my pet hates is people who seek advice without qualification. And I'm going to quantify that, okay? So there's lots of groups on social media. Some of them are really good. Uh, they've got really, you know, good people on there, flight instructors, examiners. Some of them are not even UK-based. Some of them are, you know, US-based and things. So if you're going to seek advice about questions that you're struggling with on social media on groups make sure that the person who's given you the answer to your question is knowledgeable enough to give you the right answer so a make sure they're based in the uk or make sure the group's based in the uk so you know you've got a fairly good chance of that secondly um if you're getting this information off people, before you take it in and absorb it and make sure, you know, and you use that information, make sure that they're a flight instructor or an examiner that you're speaking to. You know, even experienced private pilots, their, their theory knowledge might not actually be that great themselves. They might even be a student themselves that's um, at the same level as you or even maybe not at the same level as you. Just make sure whoever you're asking this, these questions to, that they are knowledgeable enough to give you the correct answer. Otherwise, you're taking this person's word for what they're saying is, is the correct answer using that and perhaps failing your exam. So just all I'm saying is there's lots of really good people out there who will offer you free advice. And that's great. You know, free advice is good, but make sure it's the right advice. Um, otherwise, you're wasting your time. Will you sit an exam? Most schools have mock exams to sit, always do a mock exam first. I know you've just read the books twice, if you follow my advice anyway. Um, you've done PBL Tutor, whatever apps you're going to use. Um, but do a mock exam first, just to make sure that on the day, A, you're in the right headspace to do it. Sometimes people come in, they're stressed out from work and all the rest of it, and they're not in the right headspace to do the exam. So make sure you relax before you do your exam, you're well revised and you've done a mock exam first. Because if you fail that mock exam, that's a good indication that you're not going to pass the real one. Read the question several times. You'd be surprised how many people fail exams through not reading the question properly. And by the way, I've done this myself many times. You either um, 
do something which is confirmation bias, which is where you read the question and you automatically uh, jump to a conclusion as to what they're asking you without finishing reading the full question. So you've read the first line and think, oh, I know what that is, and yeah, it's answer A. Uh, you know, that's confirmation bias. Um, everyone can be guilty of that. So read the question, you know, read it several times, make sure you're 100% clear on what the question's asking before you answer it. Some questions, they might be like a multi-step process. So especially with calculations, if you read the question several times, you can decipher from that question that the end result may be a three-step process. So perhaps you've got to do uh, you know, a conversion, another calculation, uh, and something else before you get to the actual answer that you require. So you know, rather than looking at it as one big problem, look at the question and work out if it is three separate steps or two separate steps or if it's just one step to get the answer you know that might be just it um, other questions are perhaps scenario based so they create a scenario around um, the situation so it might be like oh you're going on a flight to X airfield the weather's doing this this and this um, uh, the runway length is this and it's got a 2% upslope whatever it is um, what is the takeoff performance? Now, some of the thing in the description might be completely irrelevant. It might, you know, but there might be things that you need to factor in. So look at the question, but because it's a wordy question, um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a difficult one. It might just be one thing that you need to be considering, or it might be several. Don't go and sit an exam if you know you're not ready, okay? You, if you're very lucky, very, very lucky, you might fluke it, but is it the right thing to do? No, you know, if, you, if your knowledge isn't sound, um, you wanna be a safe pilot, so don't sit an exam if you're not ready. Also, if you fail that exam, which is highly likely, if you already have a feeling you're not well prepared enough, then you've just wasted an attempt. Now, if you use all of your attempts on that one exam, then you've got to resit the whole lot all over again. So you're only doing yourself an injustice by not preparing properly. And the last thing is make time. So this is tip number 10, make time to revise. Now, we're all busy, okay, we're all busy. Um, I've known people that have come here to learn to fly who've got businesses, you know, three, four kids, and they're, they're perhaps doing a, you know, a college course or something or a degree course all at the same time and learning to fly. So it's all, you know, it doesn't matter how busy your life is, you can always make time. I mean, you know, perhaps you get half an hour earlier in the morning to, to revise and do that every morning. You know, that, that's not undoable, is it? Um, you know, half the, half the country, this is a stat I read anyway, is that if it's to be believed, I'm fairly certain it's relatively accurate, is that about 50% of the population spend two hours a day on social media. Um, now, if you were to put your phone in the drawer for half an hour, ignore it, ignore Instagram, ignore Facebook, all that stuff, I'm sure you could find half an hour a day to do some proper revision every day. Um, just diarise it if you have to, but you know, you're not going to get to grips with this subject without reading the books. It's, um, you know, aviation is fairly complex. It's unlikely that this is something that you've done in, the, you know, to do with your work or anything like that. For most people, it's completely alien to them when they get into it. So you need to read up about it. So, you know, it's as simple as that. So I hope you found these tips to be, um, you know, to be useful to you. And I'm sorry if uh, any of them seem a bit sort of ranty. It's not meant to be that way at all. It's just... Uh, trying to give you inspiration and uh, support to, to get you through it really because it's not easy. I hope you found this session um, helpful. Okay, anything you need, just contact us. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell for notifications of our next video.